Bola Tinubu, the APC presidential candidate, claimed in an interview he made on Channel's television, also monitored by the Punch newspapers, that he turned Lagos from a jungle to a mega city. Yes, there's no doubt that Tinubu had a hand in making his successors governors. He literally made them governors because of his control of the party in Lagos State. But Tinubu taking credit for the development that happened under his successors might be going overboard. Even members of his party disagree with the notion that Tinubu built Lagos. What we are trying to do is to put the record straight out there. Bola Tinubu Ashiwaju was governor 1999 to 2007. So let us do convince our children for the sake of history to misrepresent. What was done in that time, in, in that frame of time, in eight years, but that just did nine years as a military governor. Jack on they did four years. Then we have the administrator within those places. So if you now come out and tell me now that is it last week that he built? Is it unilateral that he built? Is it general that they built? Is it, is it actually that they built? I will tell you two things that's why you did in Lagos for me that was very clear. He did last month, he did Kai. Give me a landmark project with all these IGR. We've heard a lot about Tinubu's master plan. Everyone had a master plan, all past governors. You can't deny that Fashola had his own or Ambode after him. Even the current governor has his own master plan. But turning around to claim their projects is a little bit absurd. Latif Jaconde also had a master plan. In fact, what he achieved in the housing sector alone cannot be matched by all successive governors of Lagos, including military administrators. All of them combined haven't matched what Latif Jaconde achieved in the housing sector alone. If Buhari didn't stop his metro line, negotiations would have been riding metro since the 80s, you know. So taking credit for the work of others is not right. Let's not do politics in this way. Let's tell Nigerians what we plan to do, not claiming credit to projects that others constructed. Under Fashola, this iconic Lekki Link Bridge was built. He recognized the fact that all inbound traffic to Lagos Island, Victoria Island from Lekki had only this Lekki road to enter Lagos. So he recognized that fact and built this bridge. It was built by Julius Bega and completed during his term. So that is foresight, that is vision. You can't say that it was Tinubu that told him to build this project. That's not right. Under Ambode 2, he recognized that Oshodi is a very important bus stop. It's a major bus stop in Lagos. In fact, even if you're landing by air in Lagos, you must pass through Oshodi depending on where you're going. If you're entering with a bus by road, there's a heavy chance that you will pass through Oshodi. That's why he built the Oshodi Transport Interchange. It's an iconic project that has contributed to the beauty of Lagos State. He also recognized that the airport road, although it is a federal road, but he had that vision to, you know, negotiate with the federal government to construct that road. Look at how he has turned the road to a 10-lane highway. This is the first road that every tourist, every foreign investor will ride on when he lands in Lagos State. He recognized that first impressions matter. If an investor is coming to Lagos State or Nigeria, and this is the first road that he's riding on, what impression are you making? What impression are you creating in the mind of the investor or the tourist? So he recognized it and built the road. And the same road connects to Ushu, the interchange. So you cannot wish away his vision. You cannot wish away his project and turn around and take credit for the project. He also built the Pensinema flyover in Agege. He recognized the traffic there and built it. Was it under the Tinubu master plan? Also, the current governor, Samuel Olu, has been a great performer trying to deliver two railway projects in his first term. This is unprecedented in Nigeria. You can't turn around and claim that project and say that it is Tunubu's project, that it's Tunubu's master plan. That's absurd. Samuolu has been busy completing all the housing projects started way back during Fashola's administration. That's performance. That is giving value to negotiations because if these projects are abandoned, it is loss to the taxpayers. It is entire loss. They will go to waste. But the fact that he went back and 
you know, have been commissioning and completing all these projects, shows foresight, shows vision. He has his own brain. You cannot, if these governors, these past governors in Lagos State, stand for election tomorrow at the federal level, they will win. In fact, if Fashola was on the ballot, not Tinubu, the other contestants will have it easy with someone like Fashola because Fashola was known as an action governor when he was there for people who live in Lagos. So you can't turn around and claim their projects. That's not correct. Also, Samuel is trying to build a new airport in Lekki and the Fort Mainland Bridge. Although the airport isn't a top priority project for now because the Motala Mohammed airport isn't at full capacity. Airplanes are not taking off there every minute like it happens in other parts of the world. So the major priority along the Lekki area should be the Green Line another metro line that should connect the Lekki area. They have done a lot of work along the Lekki Expressway. They removed many of the roundabouts and remodeled them with traffic lights, but the congestion, the traffic congestion in that area is still nightmarish because of the huge population and thousands of cars along the area. So the Green Line is a more important project. It will also return investment faster than an airport will do. It will be better for the Lagos environment because it will reduce the CO2 emissions that comes from cars. A lot of people living in that area, Awoyaya, Sangotedo, all those areas, a lot of them living there won't be coming into Lagos Island and VI with their cars if the Green Line starts operation. So that should be a top priority project if the governor or any of his aides, Mr. Jacks, if you are watching, tell the governor that the Green Line should come before the airport, although they have gotten approval, but the Green Line should come as a top priority project to ease the traffic congestion along that area. It should come as a top priority project in his second term, that's if he wins. Coming back to the claim that Lagos was a jungle, Lagos wasn't a jungle. Well, it depends on what jungle means, but Lagos was never a jungle. We've lived in Lagos for many years. We know how Lagos was during a bachelor period before the return to democracy. We know how it was when Tinubu was there as the governor. So let's not go back to that time, but the campaign should be issue-based, not just what one did in the past. What are you going to do in the future? Let's focus on that so that we can, you know, Convince Nigerians who is the better candidate. Going forward in the election, the APC is the party to beat. They are in power. They have the war chest. They made billions of naira during the primaries alone. They have the logistics. They control more states than others. You can never deny the influence of governors. Look at Lagos State, for instance, the governor recently increased salaries of civil servants. You can call it vote buying or whatever you like, but it's still an influence over the citizens. Do you know how many families that will benefit from that increment? A lot of people are averse to change. They will say a bed at hand is better than two in the bush. They will say, ah, I don't know what will happen. Let me just stay where I am. It's just because of the unknown. They will prefer to say, ah, I know this person, let's stay here. That's the same influence many governors will have in different states. They are followed by the PDP, but unfortunately, the PDP can't match their war chest. Then third is the Labour Party, led by P2B, who is banking on the ordinary people. He has said it many times that it is suffering Nigerians that will be his structure. The people I'm talking now, the people in Sokoto, who are hungry as structure. People in Ibado who are hungry are our structure. The people in Calabar who are hungry is our structure. Mm. The people in Enugu. They still have a lot of work to do to convince others, especially people sitting on the fence, people who don't know him. This is the first time in Nigeria's history that we can't predict an election. We can't say who will win this election. There are many intrigues, there are many things involved. But going forward, Labour Party might just pull some surprise, you know. So it still takes a lot of time for a new party like P2B to penetrate, although they are already shaking APC and even the old PDP. There's still a lot of work to be done by the Labour Party to convince people that, yes, things will be done differently, things will be better 
under them. But people are averse to change. No matter what you tell them, they will say, no, I don't know what these people are coming to do. Especially people that are into the system, like civil servants, and you know, they will say, ah, I don't know what policies we will bring. I don't know how it will affect me. Let me just stay where I am, where I know, you know. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to our channel and enable notification. Till next time, bye-bye.